Gillet's test. Gillet's test is a standing general assessment of the SI joints. In Gillet's test, what we're really assessing is two things. We're assessing both flexion and extension of the SI joints. We're also assessing flexion and extension of both the upper pole and the lower pole of the joint. The axis of rotation in the SI joint is posterior central relative to the PSIS and the PIS, in other words, the upper pole or the lower pole of the joint. So for the most part, we're assessing movement both in the upper and the lower pole relative to the axis of rotation. For the contacts, to assess whatever side you're going to assess, we're going to contact the PS for the upper pole of the joint, we're going to contact the PSIS on that side. So let's say, for example, I want to assess flexion of the upper pole of the right SI joint. I'm going to contact the PSIS on the right side, and then its counterpart on the sacrum, which in this case is going to be the S2 tubercle. For flexion, we're going to have the patient raise the ipsilateral leg to the side that we're assessing. The easiest way to do this, of course, with my hands where they are, I do, patient, please, if you would, I want you to flex, just tap them on that side, I want you to flex, in this case, your right leg. As the patient begins to flex their right leg, what happens is, as you flex your hip, the ligaments of the hip begin to tighten on it. If I keep raising the leg, the ilium begins to posteriorly rotate relative to the sacrum, and this is the motion that I'm feeling. So if we have movement in the joint, what you're going to feel is the ilium is going to be the first to move, and because the facet plane of the joint is between two planes, that PSIS is going to rotate posteriorly, inferiorly, and medially. In essence, what you're going to feel is it almost feels as if your two fingers are getting closer, moving closer together as the ilium posteriorly rotates. To assess the lower pole of the joint, be it flexion or extension, your contacts are going to be the PIIS and its sacral counterpart, in this case the S4 tubercle, for examination purposes. Palpation of the PIIS can be a little bit difficult sometimes. To find it, what you really want to do is, when you palpate the PSIS, fall medially into the joint line. What you're going to feel when you're in the joint line, it almost feels as if that little furrow that's between two fingers. If you, if you ride that furrow down, in other words, stay in the furrow, you'll find the joint is kind of makes this little bit of an S turn. It goes around the PSIS, and then the road begins to straighten out. Where the road straightens out, that's where the PIIS is. So initially what I'm going to do is, from the PSIS, fall into the joint line, palpate along that joint line, until I find that S turn and the road straightens out, that's going to get me over the PIIS. From here I'm going to palpate the S4 tubercle on the sacrum. Once again for flexion, I direct them to raise the ipsilateral leg. In this case, the ilium will be the first to move. It's going to rotate posteriorly. But because I'm below the axis of rotation, what you'll normally feel is the PIS is going to fall away from you. It's going to translate away from you. So flexion of the upper pole, my contact is PSIS, S2 tubercle. I have them raise the ipsilateral leg. I should feel the PSIS move posterior, inferior, medial. Your fingers will feel like they get closer together. For the PIS, I palpate the P, excuse me, for flexion of the inferior pole, I palpate the PIIS and its counterpart in the sacrum, the S4 tubercle. I have them raise the ipsilateral leg. Ilium is the first to move. The PIIS will feel like it travels anteriorly and inferiorly. If the axis of rotation in the joint is where it should be, posterocentral, I should feel equal excursion in the upper pole and the lower pole. If I don't feel equal excursion, where I feel in one place you might find sometimes where you feel virtually no motioning happening on the upper pole, but a lot of motioning happening on the lower pole, it implies that the axis of rotation has shifted towards the upper pole or the axis will shift to where there's less movement. We'll get into adjusting that a little bit later on. To assess extension of the upper pole and the lower pole of the SI joint, I'm going to assess extension of the upper pole of the right SI joint. Since I'm assessing the right, I'm going to contact the PSIS on the patient's right side and its counterpart, the S2 tubercle, on the sacrum. To assess extension, I have them raise the contralateral leg past 90 degrees. So do me a favor, raise it past 90 degrees. Now the mechanics of this are, as they raise the contralateral leg, the ligaments of the hip begin to tighten on the ilium. 
the ilium posteriorly rotates on this side until the ligaments of the SI joint tighten, and if they continue to raise it, the sacrum begins to posteriorly rotate relative to this ilium. Well, when assessing extension, the sacrum should be the first to move, and it should feel as if the sacrum moves back and towards me relative to the ilium. So that would be extension of the upper pole of this right SI joint. To assess extension of the lower pole of this right SI joint, I palpate the PIIS and its counterpart on the sacrum, the S4 tubercle. Once again, for extension, I have them raise the contralateral leg. Do me a favor and raise this leg past 90 degrees. They do so. The sacrum is the first to move, and because of the angle of inclination you're here, it'll almost feel sometimes as either it drops straight down or it drops down and slightly away from you relative to the hand that's on the PIAS. And this would be assessment of the upper and lower pole of extension, in this case, on the right-hand side, Jalais test.